Yo guys, what's up? My name's Alex. Welcome to the Pegasus Tsunami channel. Today I'm actually show you guys how to control whether your automatic antenna in your car goes up or down. So I'm doing mine in a 1990 Honda Accord, which actually still has the automatic antenna still installed. And it actually is functioning for a 30 year old car. Basically what I did was, I got the signal that goes from the radio to the antenna, and I put a switch between the two. So whenever the radio is on, you can switch whether you want the antenna to go up with it or down. So once you go through a car wash and you put a CD player in, or a CD in, you can actually put the antenna down and then still have a radio on, but the antenna will be up, so you won't forget about it. I feel like the car should already have this pre-installed in the vehicle, but since it doesn't, we can install that. So I wanna show you guys how I did it in my car, and you can definitely do it in any car that has an automatic antenna. So yeah, let's get to it. So as you can see, I still have my original stereo that comes with the car. So you can do it with an aftermarket one or with an OEM one. As long as you have the electrical schematics of the car, you should be able to find the wire that you need to tap into. So let's go over the tools that you need to actually start this project. So this project is completely up to preference on how you're going to wire up the wires. I personally use solder. You can also crimp them if you like. So you're going to need something to solder with. Next is the solder. I personally use a 6040 lead rosin core solder. Now you're gonna need some wire strippers, some wire, heat shrink, and if you don't know how to solder too well, grab some connectors. Don't forget the duct tape too. And the piece of lead resistance. Get some cool switches. So, this is completely up to you. As long as the switch has an on and off capability, the possibilities are endless. I personally want to be really safe, so I made sure I found out the switch's amp rating was above one amp as the ones I got here are 3 amps. Now that we actually got the things we need, here's some optional items that you might want. Grab some wire protector wrap. I got this from Harper Freight for a few bucks, so it definitely goes a long way and hides all the ugly wires that you just installed in the car. Plus, there's so much extra you can actually use it in other projects as well. So, keep that in mind. Also, grab a safety mask because you don't want to be breathing in these chemicals if you're soldering. All right, cool. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. All right, the first step is remove your radio. Now that you get the radio out, now get your schematics and look specifically for the pins that are connected to your radio. As you can see in this page here, I actually have a schematic of the pin layout of my radio. So basically, I kind of match up where I need to go and find the pin that connects to the antenna. Here I follow the wire and it actually gives you a readout of what color it is as well. So if you can't see it visually, you can find the wire itself. So for mine, I see it's a yellow with white stripes. And so I count the pins and I follow it and find the yellow and white stripes. Cool, now that we established this is the wire that we want to tap into, we can get started with the switch. So typically from what I've read, the wire for the interior of the car is 16 to 18 gauge. I'm using 14, so I wouldn't get anything less than 16. Now we get the size of the wire established, now we need to trim the edges to make a solid connection. Make sure you use the correct wire stripper size. Anything less than the size you're using can cut away the copper inside the wire, and that might cause problems later on. After you strip the ends out, now you can start with the fun part. So here, I actually have a really small switch. It's actually really tiny. So I had a really tough time soldering the wires to the connectors to the switch. So I ended up buying 2.8 millimeter size connectors so it can easily snap into place. So I made this part really easy. To make sure the connection was solid with the switch and the wires, I added a little solder to the connection between the two. Just a dab of solder between the connection and the node of the switch. Then I used some heat shrink to make sure they didn't touch. After I got the switch established with the wires, now go in your car. After you identify the wire that you need to cut into, choose a spot where you want to cut at. As an example, I have actually cut farther down the loom, so whenever I put the radio in, it has no chance of bumping into it. Now that I've got that established, now you want to start soldering. Good time to use your mask, by the way. So there's many techniques to actually solder. Personally, I actually use a technique to warm up the wire first and add the solder to the wire. Just don't do this for too long because there might be a chance you melt the plastic casing around the wire itself and that's gonna be a bad time. Remember to remind yourself to put heat shrink around the wire before you start soldering so you don't forget later on because you need to cover up the soldering points. Great, now that's basically it. You're pretty much finished. Now you can put your radio in and test it out. Now that you have established that it works, now you can use the optional item to clean it all up, like I personally did here. And that's basically it guys, so like, comment down below if you got any questions, and subscribe to see more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later!